from God. This is the reason why Isaiah in Isaiah 64 verse 1. Lord, we come this morning to pour our heart in your presence. To lift you high. To lift you above our situation. Above our challenges. Above our needs. Above, above our problems. Even above our enemies, Lord. Because you deserve. You deserve glory. You deserve worship. You deserve celebration. Lord, we celebrate you this morning. We celebrate you for your love toward us. We celebrate you for your faithfulness toward us. We celebrate you for your greatness toward us. We celebrate you for this morning, oh God. It is written in your word, whenever two or three will get up by your name, you will be among them. Lord, I believe that you are present this morning in our midst. The Bible says, O oh Lord, that marriage shall be honored by everyone. That's why we came also, Father, to give you praise, but also to honor marriage, which is a divine institution. Father, take over right now. Let everything be led by the Spirit of God, by your Spirit, for your glory, for our good. I thank you for the angels who are witnessing right now. I thank you for the heaven beings who are witnessing right now. I thank you for your presence which is witnessing right now, O oh Lord. I thank you for being here, O oh Lord. Come and reign, Jesus. We bind every power of darkness. We command them to leave this place in the name of Jesus. We bind every power of contrary. We command them to leave this place in the name of Jesus so that you alone may receive all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we say, Amen. Can somebody give Jesus a round of applause? Amen. 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 We are honored to honor marriage this morning. But before us to go to that, I want us to share first the word of God and then we will go to celebrate this union. Marriage, it is coming from God, it's not something that comes from your culture. We'll come back to that. This is the reason they are in church today. So we are in our 14 days of prayer and fasting. We are seeking the face of God. We are seeking God to intervene in our life. We are asking God to change our situation. Amen. We are learning how our situation can be impacted and can change. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, I am going to go and uh, say what I promised to you um, over the week that we'll share and then we will celebrate this marriage. Come with me in the book of... Uh, you can write first and then we'll read. We're going to have six readings. The first one is in the book of Genesis chapter 28, verse 12 to 13. The second one in the book of Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. The third one in the book of Psalm, Psalm 115, verse 16. The fourth one in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9. And the fifth one in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 3. And the last one in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 23. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23. Let me start with the book of Genesis. Genesis. Chapter 28, this is the story of uh, our father Jacob that we know very well. Jacob, Genesis chapter 28, verse 12 to 13. Quickly, the Bible says, He, Jacob, had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. 
Then above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendant the land on which you are lying. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. The Bible says, Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. I want you to underline detained. He was detained. Psalm 115, verse 16. Let me give you this exercise since you don't go through the, your Bible weekly. So let me give you this exercise, exercise to go left and right in the Bible so that at least today you can read. 115 verse 16. The Bible say, says the highest heavens I want you to underline heavens belong to the Lord but the earth he has given to mankind or to human being. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, I want you now to underline this, in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He has blessed us where? In the heavenly realms. The last one, Deuteronomy, which is a book of remembrance. Book of remembrance. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23. 28 verse 23. The Bible said that the sky over your head, your head will be bronze. The ground beneath you iron. He said, the sky over your head will be bronze, blocked. The ground beneath, beneath you will be iron. Amen. My message this morning is titled Open Heavens. Open heavens. Beloved, it is possible to have your heavens blocked. Your heavens locked. Your heaven become of iron. Every one of us has his own heaven. I mean, you have your spirituality. You have the spirituality. By the way, let me tell you that everything that is happening in the physical realms is only the result of what has happened in the spiritual realms. Amen. There is nothing that takes place in your physical realms if it hasn't taken place in the spiritual realms, in your heavens. So the heaven, your heavens, are more important than the physical. Because if you change your heavens, your physical will be affected, will only follow. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the Bible says in the book of Psalm 115, that God lives in heavens. The Bible says, heavens are for God. God has heavens for him. He lives there. Jesus told us when we are praying in the book of Matthew chapter 6, he taught us how to pray. He said, when you pray, you must say, our Father who is in heaven. God lives in heaven. He lives in heaven. He doesn't live in earth. The earth has given it to the sons of men, you and me. But he lives in heaven. But God who lives in heaven, he has the influence in earth. He can influence the earth. He is influencing all the time the earth. So if you want God to intervene, 
Thank you. So if you want God to intervene in your life, you must make sure that God leaves the heaven so that he may enter the earth to influence your situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Now how God comes to, to, to this earth to influence, he must pass through the heavens. Remember, the Bible that speaks about heaven, one heaven. The Bible speaks about heavens. So it means that for God to reach you who is in the physical, he must pass through all the heaven, heavens and uh, reach you. When he sends to you a message, the message of God passed through all the heavens and reached you. So you must make sure that those heavens are free and open, and open for the message of God to reach you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just for your information, there are many heavens. The Bible is describing seven kinds of heavens. I'm just going to talk about them, not getting into details because this is not my purpose this morning. The first heaven that the Bible speaks about is the visible heaven. When you lift up your eyes, you see the firmament, the sky. It's a kind of heaven. And you have the second heaven, which is the heaven of the spirit or the demon, where Satan was sent to. Remember the Bible said, the Bible is calling Satan in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 2, is calling him the prince of the air. So he was sent to the air, to the firmament, the air that you don't see. He is a prince of the air. You don't see where Satan is, but he's somewhere there. He is in a certain heaven. And then you have the third heaven, which is paradise, where the spirits of the saints go and rest. This is where Apostle Paul was taken in the book of uh, Corinthians. The, the, he said himself he was taken to the third heaven, which is paradise. And then we have the fourth heaven, which is the heaven of angels, the angels of God. Remember the Bible says that in heaven there was not found place for Satan and his angel. So he was precipitated on the earth. But when he came on earth, he did not come in the physical earth. He went into the firmament, the second heaven. So the fourth heaven belongs to the angel who remained faithful to God. And the fifth heaven is the heaven of the 24 elders. Those who are worshipping God and putting their crown before God and saying that uh, you are worthy to take all our crowns. They are sitting in the fifth heaven. And then you have the sixth heaven, which is uh, the heaven of the four beings who are close to God, whereby they are bowing down before him. And then you have the seventh heaven, the deepest one, which is where God sits himself. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to go into details about that because it's not my aim. But... What I'm trying to say, when we say that we are speaking about heaven, somebody may ask and tell me, but pastor, the Bible said that God lives in us. Yes, he lives in you, but still in his heaven. He lives in you, but still in his heaven. Remember, God live, doesn't live in you physically. He lives in you in his spirit. So he is in you, being in you, but still he is in his seven I mean, heaven. So for you to meet God even in you, you must make sure that you pass through all the heavens and go where God is. This is what Jesus is saying, that when you are praying, you must enter yourself and close the door so that you may pass all the heavens and get where God is. So when they're speaking about heaven, heaven above, the heaven where God is, it doesn't mean literally above, but it means deep. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense to somebody? When they say that God lives up there, it doesn't mean that if you take an airplane and you fly up or you take a rocket and you fly up somewhere there, you find God. I don't know if some people are remembering Ned Armstrong. Ned Armstrong is one of the astronauts, American astronaut, who went for the first time uh, on, uh, on the moon. So he thought that somewhere they will find God somewhere because they were going so high. They went so high and they landed on the moon, still they did not find God. There are people who have been sending things to the very far away planet, planet Mars. They can't find God there. Then they're asking, where is he? We thought that if we go so higher, we'll find him there. No, God is not there. He's not on higher. That highest place where God is, is not that high up there. He is hidden in the heaven. Are you getting me? is hidden in the heaven and he is hidden in the seventh heaven so now in the bible they are telling us about the story of few people who saw their heaven 
opening and others who saw their heaven being blocked. The first one is our father Jacob. The Bible says he was at the place called Luz. As was going to his uncle Laban, he arrived at the place and he was tired and wanted to sleep. And as he fell on to sleep, the Bible said that he saw a stair which was uh, touching earth and also touching heaven. And he saw angels going up and down. In other words, the heaven was open in a way that his heaven was open in a way that uh, the angels went up and went down. The angel went up and went down. So his heaven was completely open. He was able to see the angel going up and down in heaven. He saw even God talking to him from heaven. God was able to talk to him. From the seventh heaven, God was able to talk to him. But we are also seeing another story, but this one now is a sad story in the book of Daniel chapter 10. They are speaking, the, the Bible is telling us about a certain man called Daniel. And Daniel, the Bible says that uh, he, he was praying for 21 days. We know the story. He was fasting for 21 days. As he was praying and fasting, praying and fasting, an angel came to him. The angel's name was Gabriel. Gabriel spoke to Daniel and he told him, Daniel, I came 21 days ago, tw three weeks ago. I was sent by God. Remember, he lives in the fourth heaven. As I told you, the fourth heaven is the, in the heaven of angels. He left the fourth heaven and he was busy coming to bring the answer to Daniel. When he reached the second heaven, before him to come into the first heaven where Daniel lives, something happened. A demonic angel blocked him. So it is possible for a demon to block somebody's heaven. So this poor man who was praying, he saw his heaven being blocked. He didn't even know that somebody has blocked his heaven. He was praying and crying to God, praying and crying to God, whereas his heaven was already blocked. There are people here who are screaming to God, their heaven are blocked. Their heavens are blocked. Your heaven is blocked. And because it is blocked, you are unable to receive anything from God. Or you are unable to send everything to God. Remember, when we send anything to God, we send it through prayer. And when we receive anything from God, we receive it through the answer to our prayer. So when heaven is blocked, or when your heavens are blocked, what is happening to you is nothing is able to come in and nothing is able to come out. Because your heaven is blocked. Hallelujah. Now, we saw this people, one heaven was open, and the other one, heavens was completely blocked. Hallelujah. So, what I'm trying to say here is, you must be careful. You must check yourself very well. Because, if you don't pay attention, if you don't check very well your life, you might already have your heaven, which is completely blocked. So, heaven can be blocked. Heavens of somebody can be blocked. You're, you can have a heaven which is blocked. And if your heaven it is blocked, it is impossible for you to receive anything from God. This is the reason why at Isaiah, in Isaiah 64 verse 1, he prayed God, he said, Oh God, if you can just part heaven, if you can just open heaven and come down, my mountain will be completely broken. He said, if you can just part heaven, if you can part heaven and come to my rescue, because in the time of Isaiah, you realize that no, there is something wrong with my heaven. My heaven seems to be closed, and he asked God to come and part his heaven. Amen. Amen. So it is therefore important for you to make sure that as you are calling on to God, your heaven is open. Because if your heaven is not, is not open, you might pray more than 21 days as Daniel did. And you're not going to see anything. That's why you must check. Is my, open, my, my, my heaven open or not? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, who or what blocks heaven? What can make your heaven to be blocked? 
for your prayer to not reach God or for the answer from God to not reach you. Beloved, you know, when we give, gave our life to Jesus, we thought that everything is simple. Everything is not simple. You need to understand that there are certain very complex things in the spiritual realms that you need to understand. Hallelujah. One of the things is this issue of heavens. Now, two things can block your heaven. And I want you this morning to deal with these two things. Even these people who are getting into marriage. You are entering into marriage to become together. You must organize your heaven to make sure that your heaven is open so that when you call God into the fight of your couple, into the fight of your family, because fight you are going to have. I can't tell you, you know, don't worry, marriage is just going to be rose. It will be rose, but there's no rose without thorns. You must just know how to handle the rose. Because if you grab the rose anyhow, the thorns are going to pierce you. And you'll come and tell us, oh, no, no, I don't like marriage. Marriage, look at how I'm bleeding. You are bleeding because you don't handle it well. Because there are people with the very same rose that has a, have a pierced with the thorns, they know how to handle just the flower. And they're only getting the perfume of the flower. So be careful. Hallelujah. Amen. So heaven can be blocked. Two things blocks heaven. Because of time, the first one, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 13, the Bible said there was a prince of peace. The prince of the kingdom of peace. He blocked the heaven of Daniel. Other people around, they were praying and receiving answer. But for Daniel, the heaven of Daniel was blocked. Remember, that angel, that demonic angel, did not block the heaven of everyone. He only blocked the heaven of Daniel. Because Daniel has his own heaven. That's why I'm saying that you have your own heaven. That can also be blocked. So you must make sure that yours is open. Because your heaven is not my heaven. That's why when we pray, we may pray at the same time. I may receive the answer before you. Because our heavens are different. Hallelujah. So the first thing that can block your heaven are demons. Beloved, demons are working to delay the purpose of God in your life. They are working to prevent you to enter into the destiny that God has prepared for you. Demons are working to kill your destiny. Remember King Herod. And I told you, the name Herod means killer of destiny. Herod, his purpose was to kill the destiny of Jesus. He wanted to kill when he's small so that he may not fulfill his purpose of saving the humanity. What did he? Because he couldn't find Jesus exactly, he decided to kill all the children below too. He was thinking that he will have a chance to kill Jesus among those, those kids. There are people who are in your life. There are demons who are there to block your heaven for nothing may reach you or for nothing from you may reach God. Unfortunately, those are the principles of spiritual realms. So if you do not pay attention and if you do not stand up and do something, those demons who are blocking your spiritual realms, who are blocking your heavens, will continue to maintain you in problems. I believe this is one of the reasons, one of the reasons why people are changing churches. Today is in this church, nothing happened. He goes to this church, nothing happened. He goes to the other church, nothing happened. Beloved, the issue is not changing your church. The issue is to open your heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The issue is not the bishop. It's not the pastor. It's not somebody must come from India. The issue is you must just open your heaven. The second thing that can block your heaven, it's God. God can also block your heaven. God can block your heaven. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 23. Deuteronomy 28, verse 23. The Bible said, God himself said that when I will make, I, God, will make your heaven to become like bronze and to not sin rain anymore, when I, God, and when I will make the soul under your feet to become dry, God can do that. How and why God does that? God does that when sin and disobedience has entered in your life. 
When you live a life of sin, when you live a life which is no longer honoring God, it is possible for God to block his heaven. You see, people think that we can just sin and without consequences. You can't just sin without consequences unless you confess. So, if you live in your life, if you live the sinful life, especially those kind of sin that you don't confess, especially those kind of sin that you hide, especially those kind of sin that you share in your life, that you keep in your life, as you are entering into marriage, you must understand that you need to abandon sin. Because if you enter there with sin, it's going to block your heaven. But unfortunately, the heaven that are blocked by, by sin are blocked by God himself. Now imagine if block, God blocks his, your heaven by himself. What's going to happen to you? So sin makes God to block your heaven. So demons can block your heaven, but God can also block your heaven if you live the life of disobedience. Now, because of time, these are few things that can make you question your heaven. Few things that can make you question if your heaven is still really open or is, is still closed. Your heaven will be closed when your prayers seems not to be answered. There are people you can see that, no, I have been praying, I've been praying, but I don't see any change. Beloved, when your prayers you have been praying for so many years, there is no change. You must question if your heaven is open. Daniel was praying. He prayed the first day, the second day, seven days passed. He prayed the other seven days, two weeks. He prayed the other seven days, three weeks passed. He started questioning, he said, uh-uh, there is a problem. What happened, it was, his heaven was blocked. His heaven was locked. By who? By a demon. So when you pray, as you are praying and you don't get answer, question your heaven sometimes. And when also you can question your heaven is when there is no change is happening in your situation despite your prayers. Despite the prayers that you are doing, there are no change. If there are no change, despite the prayer that you are praying, beloved, check if your heaven is not blocked. Another thing that can lead you to question your heaven is when you have no vision. When things are happening in your life always by surprise. Everything that happens to you is by surprise. Everything that happens to you is by surprise. Why? The Bible says clearly that God, in the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7 to 8, that God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servant, the prophet. Amen. You are the servant of God. Why people are, uh, things are happening to you just by surprise? Everything is happening to you by surprise. People are dying in your family by surprise. You go into accident by surprise. You go into sickness by surprise. You go into problem by surprise. It's like nothing is happening to you that God has shown to you before. You know why? It is sometimes, sometimes because your heaven is blocked. God cannot send you any vision. He's sending the vision, but the visions are blocked somewhere. Because, one, maybe there's a demon is blocking your heaven. Two, maybe God is blocking your own heaven because you do not have obedience in your life. You, are, you can also question your heaven when you are praying against demons, but it looks like those demons, they don't listen to you. They don't obey you. The Bible said, Jesus said, I give, I gave you the power to walk upon the serpent the spirit, and upon the power of darkness and nothing shall harm you. How come the demons are continuing to harm you? You must check very well. Maybe they are continuing to harm you because when you cry unto God, your heaven is locked. Then they're doing nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why when you are passing through this situation, you must start questioning your heaven. Is my heaven still open or something has locked my heaven? And if your heaven is locked, if you realize that no, there must be something wrong with my heaven, it is time for you to open that heaven. Because there is possibility to open the heaven. There is possibility for you to unlock your locked heaven. How to do that? Two ways, two things to do. The first thing to do for you to unlock your heaven, the first thing you should do is in 2 
Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Let's go quickly. Let's go quickly. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 that we know very well. And also Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. Those are two well-known scriptures. Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves. So that is the first thing for you to, to do if you want to open to unlock your heaven. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my first and turn from their wicked ways. God said, I will do what? I will hear them. Where? From heaven. God said, I will hear them from heaven because the heaven will be open. Because the heaven will be open, I, God, will be able to hear them and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their head. Beloved, as long as there is no real repentance in your life, there's not going to be opening of your heaven. People think that what works is the power of the pastor. It's not the power of the pastor that works. It is your intimacy with God that works. Amen. The power, can, the pastor can be so much powerful, but if you live in sin, there's nothing that's going to happen in your life. Amen. Today, they have taught us a very bad gospel, whereby we give, we bring gifts, we bring money, we give everything to the pastor, to the prophet, so that he can pray for us. We don't care about how we live our life. We don't care about how we are conducting our life. All we care about, I've given my, I've given my offering. Father, pastor, this is my offering. This is my sin. Sin is not going to work if you live a life of sin. Amen. Sin is not going to do anything to you if you and God are not in good terms. Nobody should lie to you like they lie to give. If you give, God will open. God will, you will give to God. God will open if your life is out of sin. Unfortunately today, many Christians, we have been fooled. We are angry because we went places. We paid our 5,000 rand to sit one meter from the prophet. But nothing has happened. You know why nothing has happened? The problem is not the prophet. The problem it is you. Because the heaven whereby the prophet prayed already so that the blessing may reach you. But when the blessing was coming to reach you, the heaven through which the blessing was supposed to reach you is still locked. Hallelujah. Amen. So you better open your heaven by living a life of a repentance. You must repent from your sin. You must abandon your sin. You must make things right with your maker, Jesus Christ. Amen. You must confess your sin and change your life. If you change your life, it will enable heaven to open. And when we will declare things upon you, it will happen. People, a prophet has declared things upon your life. Everywhere you go, they declare. But nothing is happening. You know why nothing is happening? Because your heaven is still locked. It is time for you to unlock your heaven. It is time for you to do what? Unlock your heaven. How will you unlock your heaven? Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, God is telling us that if our sin are so dark, if we come to him, God is going to say that, come let's talk about it. Come let's talk about it. Come now, let us settle. This is God who is speaking. He said, come let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as a snow. God wants you to have a meeting with him. God wants you to try to change things. He is calling you. Because if you continue like this, you continue to live that life that you are living and think that everything is going to be okay. Let me tell you this morning, nothing is going to be okay until you change your life. Nothing is going to be okay, my brother, until you change your life. Things are going to be okay when you change your life and give yourself to Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and make the word of God the standard of your life. So if you are here and you still live anyhow and you still conduct your life anyhow and you still have a double life, a church wife, a brother, outside you are somebody else, you are acting 
you are blocking your own heaven. You better change your life for your heaven to open up. You could have been far by now. You could have received a lot from God. But you are not receiving because your heaven is still closed. The second thing to do for you to unlock your heaven, for you to change, for you to move things, it is in the book of James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. And also in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 16 to 21. I'm going to finish so that we can speak about marriage. James chapter 5, verse 16. And Matthew chapter 17, verse 16, uh, 17 to 21. The Bible says, James, therefore, confess your sin to each other and pray for each other. That you may be healed. Now, here is the key. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. The prayer. So the second thing you should do for you to unlock your heaven, you must pray the prayer of a righteous. In other version, they say, the prayer of a righteous avail tremendous power. It's a very tremendous power. And I told you what the power does. The power changes the situation. So when power is there, it will unlock your heaven. So you need to understand that for you to open your heaven, you must become a prayerful man who pray in righteousness. Because it is possible to pray the entire night, 14 days, but still not pray in righteousness. Many of us were praying the whole night, disturbing our neighbors in our prayer, disturbing our husband and our wives, disturbing our families in prayer, but nothing is happening because the prayer is not the prayer of the righteous. God, the Bible said, does not listen to the prayer of the sinners. That's what the Bible says. So if you want your prayer to be heard, and you want your heaven to be unlocked by your prayer, you must learn to pray the prayer of a righteous. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you pray the prayer of a righteous, prayer has power to unlock your heaven. But now, come, let me add something because if I say only prayer, it is not complete. Matthew chapter 17, verse 16 to 21. Matthew 17, 16 to, to 21. The Bible says, now, this is a gentleman who brought to Jesus' disciples his son who was demon-possessed. Now, let's go through and learn something, a key. I brought to him, to your disciples, he says, to Jesus, but they could not heal him. They could not heal him. Okay, next one, quickly. Now, Jesus is answering. You are believing and perfect generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall put up with you? Bring the boy here. Jesus said, bring the boy. Bring the boy. They, they brought the boy to Jesus. Next one. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that very same moment. 19. 19. Then the disciple came to Jesus in private and asked him, Why could we, couldn't we drive it out? Why we couldn't open our heaven? Why are we struggling to open our heaven? Now listen to the answer of Jesus. He replied, One, because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith, small as a master seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. First thing. Second thing. So the first thing, faith. Prayer with faith. So I'm not just saying you should pray the entire night and pray. You can pray the entire night, but you, if that prayer does not have faith, it's not going to unlock your heaven. Prayer of faith. The second thing, Jesus told them that, yes, he said, he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. <laughs> and, oh. and fasting. 
Yours is prayer and fasting. Good. He said, this kind of demon, you need faith, but prayer and fasting. Beloved, your heaven will be unlocked when you pray the prayer of a righteous with faith, with fasting. This is what we are doing now. That's why we are in 14 days of prayer so that to make sure that our heaven is unlocked. Because our heaven may be locked by kind of demon. And Jesus said, those kind of demons, they can only go away when you pray with faith and you pray with fasting. Then they'll go away. To those who don't like, they don't like to fast, let me tell you, there are certain demons that you'll never overcome if you don't fast. Jesus said this kind, the kind of demon that was to, you, you see, those disciples of Jesus, because they cast out a lot of demons before. Before them to encounter these difficulties, they, um, they cast out a lot of demons. But when they, they arrived at this kind of demon, it was difficult for them. Jesus told them what was the reason. The reason he said this kind can only go out when we pray and the prayer of fast. So now, how will you know that the demon who is blocking your heaven is a demon who need fast? You see the reason why? As a child of God, you need to fast. That's why as we want to unlock our heaven by fasting these 14 days that we are fasting. Because we want our heaven to be unlocked. Amen. So if you want your heaven to be unlocked, learn to pray and learn to fast. So we said two keys. The first one, you need to repent from your sin. Because sin is going to make God himself to lock your heaven. If you repent, you are sure that there's nothing that can come from God that can lock my heaven. The second thing, you need to pray the prayer of a righteous with faith and with fast. Then I know because I have those keys, my heaven will be open. So now, you can open your heaven. You can pray this morning for your heaven to be open. Because brothers and sisters, as pastors, we are in trouble nowadays. People that don't do anything anymore, he just come to you and bro drop his problem. Say, Pastor, I'm paying my tax. Yes, he's getting my problem. I want tomorrow this problem will be sorted out. He goes back in his home, he lives any kind of life. When he comes back the following day, say, Pastor, I told you, I want my problem to be sorted out. They are sending pastors now to the mountain. People are giving pastor money. Pastor, I'm making a problem. Go pray for me to the mountain. Here is the money. Go on five days of prayer, pastor. Go pray for me. When you come back, I want my problem to be sorted out. But him, on Friday, is at coconut. He just know that pastor is busy praying for me there. It can't work like that. It doesn't work like that. He takes his problem and drop to the intercessor. He's just waiting for everything to be okay. Everything won't be okay, my brother. It won't be okay until you unlock your heaven. Because these people can pray for you. They can do a good job. The poor pastor can do a good job. Pray for you. But for it to reach you, it will pass through your own heaven. Amen. Not through the heaven of your pastor. Not through the heaven of your mother. Not through the heaven of your husband. Through your own heaven. So you better make sure that your heaven is open. Because of time, I want you to rise up on your feet. Let's unlock first our heaven before us to speak quickly about marriage and uh, to unite this couple. Beloved, check yourself. Is your heaven open or is your heaven locked? Are you satisfied or you are not? If you are not satisfied, it means that there is something wrong with your heaven. And you can unlock it. We learned this morning that two things can lock our heaven. Demons can lock them, but God can also lock it. God locks our heavens when we live the life of sin. Demons, they don't care. They will always try. Sin or no sin, they will always come to try their luck. That's why, for you to unlock your heaven, you need first to examine your life and make things right. I hope you are here who have been expecting things from God. 
I hope you have good relationship with God. I hope you and God, you are in good terms. I hope you and God, you are okay. Because if things are not okay between you and God, your heaven will not going to be unlocked. Check your life. Are you okay with God? Is God happy about your life? About the way you are leading yourself? About the way you are living your life? Is God okay with that? If God is okay, it is time for you to humble before the Lord. Look at the way you pray. You can't unlock your heaven with the kind of prayer you do. The two minute prayer that you do in the morning for the day, for the day, bless the day in Jesus' name, amen. And you leave your room. Those are not earnest prayers that can unlock your heaven, that can sort out your problem. If Jesus being the son of God, the Bible said he prayed earnestly with screaming and crying. Who do you think that you are to pray just two seconds and think that things are going to change? They're not. You don't even fast. You don't even spend time in fasting. Your heaven won't be unlocked. God came this morning not to condemn you. He came this morning because he wants you to enjoy his presence. He wants your heaven to be opened. To be opened so that you can enjoy him. Look at yourself. Maybe you are here. You don't make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. This is where things are starting. Jesus must become first your personal Lord and Savior. If you want to see things happen. Let me help you. Say, Lord Jesus. I've been so far away from you. Leading my life by myself. I was the boss of my own life. Forgive me. That's why my heavens were closed. I humble myself this morning. I lay my life down before you, Lord. Come and become my Lord and my Savior. Take over my life. Forgive me as I am confessing and abandoning my sins. In the name of Jesus. Change my life, O oh Lord. Put in me your spirit of prayer. Make me a prayerful person. Prayerful Christian. In the name of Jesus. Lord, open heaven. Lord, open my heaven. From today, let my heaven be open. Any demonic power, any demonic entity that was blocking my heaven, as I made things right with God, I command those demons, leave my heavens, leave my heavens, leave my heavens. God will be able to hear my prayer and I will be able to receive the answers from God. Because my heaven is open now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you believe your hope? Your heaven is open? It is open. God bless you.